Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Redcliffe. Just in time for tea, sir. We'll be serving as soon as the bell strikes four. Splendid, Bassett. I see. What's the score? We've got 12 to their 88, sir. Oh, nip and tuck, eh? Oh, yes, sir. Very close. Good hard-fought battle. All innings, eh? Who's batting? Lord Fancourt Babbley. You're rather funny this afternoon. Now, don't get angry, Mother. Don't mother me. I'm sorry, I was only rehearsing my lines. After all, you are my mother in the varsity play, aren't you? And that's where it ends, sir. All right, if you're going to quibble. It seems to be coming this way. Oh. Somebody get some water. Let me help you. Oh, I'm frightfully sorry, Mr. Redcliffe. Are you hurt? That is one of the silliest questions I've ever heard from a student. You hit me on the head with a hard cricket ball, creating a condition of torticollis. A stiff neck to you. Then you ask me whether I'm hurt. Well, I, I assure you it was entirely accidental. Just a lucky hit, that's all. I mean, uh, bad. I think you'd better go back to the game. Yes, before you say anything more. Am I hurt? Do you realize, Bassett, someday that young idiot will sit in the House of Lords? Yes, sir. God save the Queen. <laughs> Don't let it unnerve you, old man. Come on, Babs, hit up some sixes. You can do it. Very well. Look, there are the girls. Yes, but old Spedigue's with them. What's the score now? That gives us 60 to their 88. Joe, that makes it close, doesn't it? It does, rather. Oh. T! Goldsy! Good on you, Babs. Great well hitting. played, Babs. Well played, Babs. Well played, Babs. Well he was standing. He was grand. Sugar old man. Where's old Redcliffe? Maybe if I brought him some tea, he'd calm down a bit. He's over there, Babs. Oh, yes. Thank you, Redcliffe. Oh! Oh! I'm exceedingly sorry, sir. Another lucky hit, eh? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Rather like fires, don't you? Rather. Nothing like a jolly old fire, I always say. Oh, that's interesting. I've always had a bit of a passion for them myself. Really? Well, what do you say we have another spot of tea and see what's burning? Oh, perfect. Come on. Lord Babbley! Lord Babbley! Huh? What happened? That is what I intend to find out in my study at half past ten in the morning. This place for conduct was still in the dark.
darling Kitty. My dear Kitty. Darling Kitty. Kitty, my darling, I... Want something, Babs? No, no, I just came to borrow my white tie you borrowed from me last November. Do you mind? I shan't keep it long. No, not at all, old man. Go right ahead. It's the one with the cherry stain on it. Kitty, my darling. I say, Jack, where do you keep my ties? Please, Babs, I'm thinking. I'm trying to put a speech together. And I'm trying to put myself together. Where's my tie? Kitty, my darling. In all this world, there is no one quite like you. Flattery won't help you any. I want my tie. Oh, I wasn't speaking to you. I'm rehearsing a speech. Kitty's coming to lunch, and I've got to propose to her directly after. That's all very interesting, but I want my tie. I've got to work fast. Old Spedigue's taking Kitty and Amy off to Scotland tonight. He wants to get them away from Charlie and me. What's the matter? Afraid you won't marry them? No, he's afraid that we will. You see, he's their guardian. Gets a salary for it. Well, as soon as they marry, his income stops. And there's my bag. I know I didn't pawn it. Oh, if you don't mind, old man, I think I'll keep it a little longer. I'm going away next weekend. So am I. Oh, now, don't be a bounder, Babs. We'll toss a coin for it. Hello. Oh, hello, Charlie. Have you met your aunt already? No, uh, I'm on my way now. I dread it. It's bad enough meeting an aunt you know, but to meet one you don't know. Her name's enough to scare me. Donna Lucia Dalvadores. That's not an aunt, that's a cigar. Imagine, he doesn't even know what she looks like. It's not my fault. She went to Brazil before I was born. Be prepared, Charlie. She's probably a hideous old lady with suffragette tendencies. I wouldn't even bother meeting her. <laughs> well, hideous or not, she did all right down there. Married some Brazilian on his deathbed and came away with millions. Millions? Why, well, Charlie, what are you standing here for? How would you like it if you were a little old lady and had to wait at the station all along? <laughs> Go and fetch Charlie. There's plenty of time. Oh, is there? Now, mind you, don't miss her. You know how strict Kitty and Amy are. If your aunt isn't there to chaperone them, no luncheon. Don't worry, I won't miss her. Oh, I say, Jack, do you mind if I borrow a few of these? I'm expecting some friends in this afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry, Baz, but we'll need every drop for luncheon. Oh, that reminds me, I've got to be changed. Well, that's gratitude. Borrows my ties and my sweaters the moment I ask for a few bottles of shampoo. Yes, Brasset. I just ran into Mr. Wiggins, my lord. He'd like you to stop by his shop and try on your varsity show costume. Oh, I haven't time for that now. I'll tell you what you do, Brasset. You go fetch the costume, bring it to my rooms, and I'll try it on later. Well, it's a bit of a distance, my lord, with a bundle. I'm afraid I'll have to take a cab. Oh, a cab, of course. Cab. Uh, just a moment, I'll get it. Oh, I say, Charlie, could you lend me a half crown, please? <laughs> Sorry, Dad, I'm flat. I'll get it for you, then. Jack, hmm? have you uh, half a crown? <laughs> Not a halfpenny. Just a moment. Lend me half a crown, will you, Brasset? Certainly. Thank you. Here you are, Charlie. Oh, thanks, old man. Here we are. Well, thank you, Charlie. Awfully decent of you. The cab will be two shillings. Keep the change, Brass. Oh, thank you, my lord. Thank you. There you are. Oh, but that's such a bother, sir. Uh, no bother at all. Entered St. Old's College, Michaelmas time, 1880. So far, your record's most admirable. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. My word, you've been here a long time. We realize there's regulation which says that a student may complete the course in not less than three years, and not more than 15. Uh, but I'm only in my 10th year, sir. What is this? Oh, I didn't know she was married, sir. When I said you were to be rusticated, I was wrong. Uh, thank you, sir. You, sir, are no longer a member of this university. You're expelled. Expelled? But, oh, but please, sir, I must get my degree. 
You see, I'm due to join my uncle's firm in the fall, Hogarth, Hawks, and Baverly, the famous London solicitors. And they've handled several sensational murder trials. And I I'm sure, Mr. Redcliffe, if you ever have occasion to commit murder, I, I can get them to handle your case. You cannot bribe me, sir. Lord Baverly, you're expelled. Oh, no, sir. They, they won't take me in without an Oxford degree. It's, it's tradition, you know. You should have thought of all that before you rang the fire bell. But I didn't do it purposely. I fell down the stairs. I, I was unconscious. Judging from your scholastic record, I think it's extremely difficult for you to determine whether you're unconscious or not. Uh, I assure you, sir, it was an accident. I tripped. I... I have witnesses. But who were the witnesses? Well, Charles Wickham and Jack Chesney. Wickham and Chesney? They're two very reputable gentlemen. Will they testify to that? Oh, I'm sure they will, sir. They, they were right there when it happened. And I, I know I can refresh their memory. Very well. Bring them here at half past ten in the morning. If they corroborate your story, I reconsider. If not... Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good day. Uh, good day, sir. Good day. Did he say ten or half past? Oh, my neck! So, as your solicitor, Donna Lucia, I thought it only fair to acquaint you with the facts. And I'm most grateful. Of course, I don't mind Charlie falling in love. But as his only living relative, I do hope it's the right girl. Exactly. Now, I don't see that the girl is a fortune hunter, mind you, but I wouldn't put it beyond her guardian. Mr. Spettigue's reputation is none too savory. If I could only meet the young lady and, and judge for myself, I'd... Suppose I went incognito. Splendid. Yes, but how would I get about? Unescorted. Oh, I can fix that. I give you a letter to my nephew, Lord Fancourt Beverley, and ask him to show you around Oxford. Yes. Oh, no, no. No? No, that won't do. He's a friend of Charlie's, and he might warn him. But don't tell him who I am. Say that I'm, uh, I'm, uh, Mrs. Beverly Smith. Ripping! Oh. What's the matter? Well, I'm just thinking Smith. Smith. Rather an ordinary name for a firm of our reputation to be connected with, don't you think? Well, how about Mrs. Beverly Smythe? Oh, now, now that's much better. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, Jack. I say, Jack. Oh, Jack! Oh, hello, Charlie. Did you meet my uncle? I mean, your aunt? No, she wasn't on the 11 o'clock. Oh, well, that's too bad. I, I hope she... Uh, I hope she isn't lost. Well, oh, no. she'll probably be in on the 12.15. Now, Babs, that's not very sporting of you. You said I might keep it over the weekend. I did not. And besides, I want to have my initials put on it. Well, that can wait till Monday. Hey, hey, look out! That's Charlie. my bag! Charlie, that's my bag! Look out! I ought to bash your crumpet. You might have cracked the, the letter. I say you are in a temper. What happened? Did old Redcliffe find you? Find me? He's going to send me down. What? You'd think young Stafford would be sport enough to admit he knocked you out. He didn't knock me out. I tripped. And I've got witnesses to prove it. Really? Who? You and Charlie. Me? I wasn't anywhere near the place. And I was on the cricket field. You were both sitting on the top step, and don't forget that in Redcliffe's office tomorrow. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, now I remember. We were sitting on the top step. Exactly. Yes, and I was sitting in your lap. Oh, stop spooping, Charlie. Oh, I say, Charlie. You can't be there tomorrow morning. Oh, no, of course. Uh, I shall be uh, dragging my auntie about. But, Charlie, I've got to see the vice chancellor. Now, look, fellows, you can't do this. It's a matter of life and death. If you're not there tomorrow, I'll be sent down. And then my uncle won't take me into the firm. And then my family will send me back to that sheep ranch in New Zealand. And when I arrive there, they'll all be waiting for me and, and calling to me. Who? The sheep. 
35,000 dirty, smelly sheep. And every one of them saying, Babs! Babs! <laughs> <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? We were only joking. <laughs> Don't worry, Babs, we won't let you down. You better not. The last time I was rusticated, my family kept me in New Zealand for two years. If it happens again, I'll be a sheep herder the rest of my life. Sheep herder. Come in! Beg pardon, my lord. I've just come from Mr. Wiggins with your costume. It's ready to try on. I'll do it right away. Now, see here. You can fellow. start laying the luncheon table at any time, Brassett. Yes, sir. And Brassett, fetch me six penny worth of hairpins. Hairpins, my lord? Hairpins. Very good, my lord. Take it out of that half crown I gave you this morning. Yes, my lord. Beg pardon, sir. Now, don't shout at me, son. I'm bringing you your allowance. Dad! How are you, Jack? Splendid, sir. Charlie, I want you to meet my dad. Dad, this is Charlie Wickham. How do you do, Sir Francis? Hello, Wickham. Well, I'll run along. I'll be in my rooms if you want me, Jack. Goodbye, Sir Francis. Goodbye, Wickham. I say you are a handsome devil. Not bad for 51, eh? No one would ever believe it. Good looking, charming, oh, debonair. Oh, no need going on, Jack. Your checks are already made up. You know, Dad, I don't see half enough of you. I wish I could afford cigars like these. Well, can't you? No. Now that I've come into the family title, I have also come into the family debts. Debts? Mm, you know, red ink and all that sort of thing. I'm afraid, Jack, for the next few years, we're going to be known as charming, educated, cultured paupers. Well, that ruins me with Kitty. Hmm? What I? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just thinking aloud. Oh, there's one ray of hope, though. I... I think I have an appointment for you in New Zealand. New Zealand? Mm, wonderful place. Great sheep-raising country. Yes. I've heard all about it. Say, Dad, I've an idea. Couldn't this all be settled by a wealthy marriage? Oh, no, I rather dislike that sort of thing, Jack. If I were you, Listen, I... Charlie Wickham's aunt, Donna Lucia Dalvadores, is coming here to lunch today. She's a wealthy widow. No, and... don't do it, Jack. I wouldn't advise your marrying just for money. But not me, Dad. You. Me? Oh, you young devil. I'll get along, son. Don't worry about me. Well, I wasn't, sir. I'm afraid I was being very selfish. What? You see, Dad. I'm in love, frightfully, devastatingly. But without any money, I haven't the right. What's she like? Oh, she, she's like the stars, the moon, and the sun. Is she now? Sounds like the real thing. It is, sir. I was going to propose to her at lunch today, but. How are the sheep in New Zealand? Pretty bad. Rather smelly, too. What's the matter, Jack? Won't she wait? <coughs> oh, I think she would, sir, but she has a guardian. Oh. Um, your mother and I eloped under uh, similar circumstances. Well, of course, at the time, I had a little income. <laughs> yes, an income can be a wonderful thing. It certainly can. And, um, how, how old is this uh, Charlie's aunt? Oh, I don't know. Probably 90, like most aunts. Well, at 90, they don't bother you much. And you say she's very wealthy. They say she has millions. I'm sure your mother would understand. Hmm? Well, I'll have luncheon with you today. Oh, no, Dad. I couldn't let you do anything like this for me. A loveless marriage? But I'm doing it for love, son. I think I'll run along and get shaved. No man should propose on a full beard. After all, it'd be rather nice to have the stars, the sun and the moon for a daughter-in-law. What'd you say her name was, Jack? Kitty. Kitty. That's a lovely name, Jack. Yes, sir. It is. <sighs> Kitty. Jack! 
Jack! She's not coming. Don't tell me that. But she must come. We're expecting her. Send her a wire. There's tell not her. time enough. The girls won't stay without a chaperone. Maybe the registrar's wife was... Jack! Look! Come in. Come in! Oh, I beg your pardon. Can I help you? Where is she? She couldn't come. So we've got to get another chaperone. Well, why don't you ask Mrs. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, we. Now stop it. Stop it, you blighters. Stop it, I say. Stop it, you folks. Stop it, I say. You can fool us, you can fool the girl. Come on, Babs, be a sport. I won't be a lady for you or anybody else. Now keep your distance, and I mean it. Very well. You know, Charlie, I've just been thinking. I don't remember seeing Babs trip on the stairs last night. Come to think of it, I don't either. And if we didn't see him, we couldn't very well tell Redcliffe that we did. Oh, of course not. That would be lying. But you've got to. He'll send me down if you don't. Then you'll be able to see all those lovely sheep. This is blackmail. Yes, it's very simple. You help us and we'll help you. Shh. We must tidy up the room. Just a moment. You'd better make up your mind. But, fellows, this is this is all so unfair. All right, little Bo Peep, if you want your sheep back again. But you promised. Are you going to take advantage of an old friendship? The answer is yes. Keep your voice up and your dress down. Come in. How do you do? Uh, so nice of you to come. Are we too early, Mr. Wickham? Oh, oh, no. You didn't mention any time, Mr. Chesney, so... No, we, we came directly. Mr. Spetty, you left the house. Uh, well, 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 uh... Won't you sit down? Oh, yes. Thank you, but uh, has Mr. Wickham's aunt arrived yet? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, of course. Oh. Oh, uh, uh, Donna Lucia, Miss Pettigrew. Uh, Miss Verdun, Donna Lucia Dalvadores. Charlie's aunt. <laughs> yes, my, uh, my aunt. <laughs> oh, uh, are you uh, quite comfortable, auntie, dear? I'll say something, you idiot. The <laughs> hell? The hell? How are you doing? <clears throat> How do you do, my dears? How 
how do you do, Donna Lucia? We, uh, we brought you these. For me? I mean, for me? <laughs> how sweet of you, my dear. <laughs> oh, well, would you like to set down your parasols, ladies? Oh, thank you. Oh, Miss Amy, I want to show you this picture. What am I supposed to do with these? Jack and myself at the picture. Put them in your dress. No, 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 that's another fellow. That's Jack at the top with his oh. moustache. Oh. He had my mask yesterday. Oh, okay. Silly pictures. Don't, don't show them, man. Oh, is I think the good on your boy. I really do. <laughs> I won this trophy, too. This is for lacrosse. Uh, this bat is rather nice. It's an autograph by uh, um, W.P. Grace. You've seen him with that enormous beard, surely. Yes, really? Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm quite a David. Do you know who he is, do No, I don't. Oh, stop. Sweet game, we old boy stuff. It's a little picture, Jack. Yes, that's me. Uh, my first year. <laughs> May I arrange this for you, Donna Lucia? So nice of you, my dear. <laughs> the table. This is the one I meant. Thank you. Oh, come in, Brassett. Oh, beg pardon me, Lord. Mr. Wiggins... Now, Brassett, how many times have I told you not to call me my lord? Uh, not yet, anyway. Perhaps later, but uh, uh, not now. Oh, I want you to lay another place for my father. Yes, sir. Uh, he can sit next to uh, Donna Lucia. Oh, yes, sir. Crossing the quad, sir, I saw a gentleman. He was heavily heading this way, sir. I believe it was Mr. Spittigew. Oh, Mr. Spittigew? Oh, wait a minute. Mr. Spittigew! Uncle didn't go to London at Oh, no, it was a trick. Just to see what we do. We can hide in that room. Somebody, please send him away. You get rid of him. Oh, no! I wish to see Mr. Chesney. Well, don't shout. I'm not a barmaid, you know. Where are Mr. Chesney and Mr. Wickham? And where are your manners, you drunken sot? What? Remove your hat in the presence of a lady, or I shall write to the Times about this. Oh. That's better. Or is it? I wish to see the two young gentlemen at once. Well, you can't see them because I'm the only gentleman present. What? I mean, I'm... I distinctly saw two young ladies come in here. Well, that's curious because I'm the only young lady here. <sighs> Of course, in your condition, you probably saw me twice, coming and going. I flip back and forth, you know. They've probably gone into the garden. They've done nothing of the kind. Well, then they've gone into town. Then why don't you follow them? If you're able to walk in your condition. Madam, I am perfectly sober. Sober? <laughs> sober. Madam, I assure you. I advise you to sign the temperance pledge and be saved before it's too late. Something just hit me. Probably the tenth drink. <gasps> you can come out now, my dears. How sweet of you, Donna Lucia. Oh, you were an angel to do it for us. My old tip is claret. Donna Lucia. I think you had better sit down. Now, ladies, I don't think you've seen our view of the cloisters, no. have you? On a clear day, you can see them quite clearly. When it's clear. Really? I just saw your father coming up the stairs, sir. Now, you be careful when my dad gets here. Why? I'm not related to him, too, am I? Of course not, you idiot. You're Charlie's aunt from Brazil. Brazil? You know where the nuts come from. No, no, no. It's my father. Hello, Dad. Hello, Jack. Miss Spettigew, Miss Verdun. Kitty, my father. Oh, delighted. Uh, has uh, she come yet? 
Oh, uh, Charlie, will, will you introduce your aunt? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, Donna Lucia d'Alvadores, uh, Sir Francis Chesney, Jack's father. Uh, how do you do, Sir Francis? <coughs> how do you do? I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil. Uh, where the nuts come from? I uh, thought you said she was only 90. Listen, Dan, I wanted to explain. My son had told me how well, uh, how charming you were. <laughs> and after seeing you, I can only say that he is a master at understatement. <laughs> <laughs> how sweet of you. My, what a lovely flower. Oh, you like it? Will you accept it? Uh, thank you, Sir Francis. I shall have it stuffed. Luncheon is ready, sir. Oh, well, thank you, Brasson. Oh. Dad, will you take Sir Miss... Lucia, but of course, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, will you uh, seat us, please, Auntie? Uh, yes. Now, the girls, the girls will sit right here next to me. <laughs> uh, but, Auntie, you have to carve the lamb. <clears throat> well, in that case, the young ladies will sit there and there. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes. Will you be seated, Donna Lucia? <laughs> I, I will sit here, son. <laughs> Brassett, you can open the champagne. Yes, sir. How do you find the climate in London, <laughs> Brassett, where's the champagne? I can't seem to find it, sir. What do you want? The champagne, auntie. What? You haven't any? Lucky I brought some with me. In my bag, Brassett. So! <laughs> I was right after all. Why, Mr. Spurdy, you are not playing this instant. Come out, come out. Please, Mr. Spurdy, how could I assure you we thought... You thought I'd gone to London. That's why you both came here. Where did you get that hat? Take it off. You're a very silly old woman, and please don't interfere. Why, you... <laughs> Look here, sir. You cannot put such an affront upon Mr. Wickham's friends. I can only say that I'm deeply annoyed to find my niece and my ward without my permission coming here to... Sleep Mr. Wickham's arm. Indeed. Allow me to introduce you. Donna Lucia Dalvadores, Mr. Spettigo. Donna Lucia Dalvadores? The millionaires. How do you do? Uh, how do you do, Mr. Spedigue? I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil. Uh, where the nuts come from? <laughs> please, please forgive me for being so rude. However, now that I see that my wards came only to pay their respects to a most charming woman, I am ashamed of my ungentlemanly conduct. But come, come. We can't be gentlemen all the time, uh, can we? <laughs> uh, now that you're here, Mr. Spedigue, uh, won't you stay for lunch? Well, if you wish it. Am I forgiven? Forgiven? Will you accept this flower as a peace offering? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Madam, thank you. allow me. No, no, allow me. Now, shall we sit down? A uh, blessed, you may serve the... <gasps> oh, 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 is it not romantic that Shelley once strolled these same paths? And here we are. And here we are. Oh! Don't why you... Oh. Why, I beg your pardon, madam. <laughs> oh, now that we're alone, Donna Lucia, there is so much I'd like to say to you. Yes, I know, and there are a few things I want to say to you, too. Oh, don't be afraid, Donna Lucia. Let your heart speak. I, I doubt that this is the time or place. I, I have it. Uh, let's meet in the garden over there in 15 minutes. Good. Then we can speak freely. <laughs> I shall be waiting. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh. I see you've got rid of Sir Francis. Uh, yes, he, he had an appointment. Good. And now that that fortune hunter is gone, I can tell you something that has been on my mind ever since I first met you. Well, I'm sure it'll be very interesting to one of us. I know a very quiet little place. A shady bower near the river. Uh, splendid. Uh, you go there and I'll meet you later. Oh, you come with me. Ah, my reputation, you know. If they see us together, people might talk. Oh, of course, of course. Forgive my impetuosity. 
Now, just follow this path. You can't miss it. You can't. <laughs> Now I know what women go through. My dear... My dear Kitty... There's something I'd very much like to say to you. Well, then say it, Mr. Chesney. Well, I... I oh. Uh, I beg your pardon, dear. I only wanted to speak to Jack. Oh, certainly, Sir Francis. Uh, I'll go and find Amy. Found it, Dad. I was about to propose. But now, Jack, you can propose with a clear conscience. My conscience is perfectly clear, Dad. It'll be clearer than ever now, Jack. We'll have an income again. How? Donna Lucia. She's mine. Uh, I, I mean, ours. Donna Lucia? Yes. Have you proposed? Not yet. But the way the old girl's been cooing at me, it won't be long now. Oh, Dad, you mustn't. I forbid it. Well, now, Jack, we've been all through that. It's not only for your good, but mine. Dad, please, you can't. Oh, we, we can't. We, we mustn't have anybody like that in the family. Th there'd be a scandal. A scandal with a perfectly harmless old lady like that? Dad, listen. There, there's something I've got to tell you. Yes, Jack? She... She isn't what she seems. No? No, she isn't. She... She's a woman with a past. A past? You can't have a past with a face like that, Jack. It's impossible. Her face wasn't always like that. And, and besides, she drinks. Yes, sir. She drinks excessively. It's true. Her suitcase is filled with champagne. You saw it yourself at luncheon. I know, Jack, but oh, you got... Oh, Dad, you're too good and fine to throw yourself away on a woman like that. It's true. I never did like a woman who drinks too much. Oh, but after all, I shall be drinking with her. Won't be too much of a sacrifice. Oh, Dad, not now. Wait a few days. A few days? No, Jack. I've got to work fast to beat out old Spettigue. He's been getting ideas about the lady, too. Spettigue? Yes. And if he gets her, you may as well kiss Kitty goodbye. No, son, I've seen my duty and I'm going to do it. But first, I'm going up to your rooms and have a rattling good whiskey and soda. I don't think I could propose to that face without one. Oh, Dad, think it over for a time. Oh, it's no use, son. I, I say, where's your whiskey? In the piano. Thank you. It was terribly clever of you to engage Mr. Spettigue in conversation so we could steal away by ourselves. I was only too happy to help, my dear. Uh, my dear, would you be good enough to show me the cloisters and things? Delighted. Look at him. He just stole her right away from me. That's nothing. You know where my father is? Getting himself a rattling good whiskey and soda. What for? To propose to Babs, that's what for. Propose to Babs? Mm. For my sake. For your sake? Yes, for somebody's sake, let's do something. Don will see you. May I see you for a moment? <laughs> May I show you the hollyhocks, Miss Amy? Oh, yes. <laughs> Please remember, I'm a fragile old lady. Have you been leading my father on? No, I merely fluttered my eyelashes. Well, that was enough. He's going to propose. All right, if he wants to propose. What? Oh, no, not me. I'm not going to marry him. Where are you going? Going up to my room and barricade the door. Your father's an army man, and I know the army. Now, don't be an idiot, Pabs. All you have to do is remain calm. Calm? With the army after me? No, Jack, I'm through. I'm getting out of these petticoats right now. Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. All right, you win. But if I turn out to be your stepmother, don't blame me. Well, all right, what are you waiting for? Bring on the old Rui, and we'll get this wrestling match over with. He's bolstering his courage at the moment with a drink. He's a little nervous. He's nervous? How do you think I feel? My dear Donna Lucia, you are here. Won't you come into the garden? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. Donna Lucia, do you know that meeting you for the first time today is to me 
like a lonely traveler coming across some bright little flowerlet in the desert. <laughs> you mean me? Yes, Donald Lucia, yes. Donald Lucia, do you know what a man longs for when he is desolate, wretched, and lonely? No, 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 no. He longs to plant that little flowerlet in his heart and nurture it with kindness and love and see it grow in all its splendor and beauty. <laughs> uh, to find this little flowerlet, I have come all the way from India. India? <laughs> and you must be awfully tired. So is there. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Now that I have found this little flowerlet, I want it to be with me always. I want it to walk by my side, to see the splendor of the Taj Mahal, to be kissed by the tropical moon. Pardon me, terribly clumsy. Oh, no. What a clumsy oaf I am. So terribly sorry. <laughs> Ah, uh, I will waste no more words, Donald Lucia. Will you be my little flowerlet? Will you be my wife? Uh, well, you see... Uh, and then I may hope? I'm afraid not. No, don't hope. I wouldn't hope if I were you. Uh, frankly, Sir Francis, I intend to marry someone much younger than yourself. <sighs> you see, you already have a son. Well, I... I hope to have a family of my own someday. At your age? Oh, I know I'm a little young to be speaking of children. But I won't always be young now, will I? <laughs> no, I suppose not. But I promise you one thing, Sir Francis. I will always be a sister to you. That is, if you care for that sort of thing. No words of mine can alter your decision. <laughs> then please accept my regrets and apologies for ever having broached the subject. <laughs> Good day. Good day, Sir Francis. Good day. Can you tell me where I'll find Lord Fancourt Beverly? Lord Fancourt? Well, uh, uh, his rooms are in that building, but he, he's not in at present. Oh. Will you see him shortly? Oh, yes. Uh, at any moment. I wonder if you'll give him this, please. Of course. Just tell him that Mrs. Beverly Smythe was here. I'm going to be in now, and I shall be back in an hour. Well, certainly, madam. Well, thank you so much. That's the woman Uncle telegraphed about. And from here, she looks mighty nice. Where are you off to? I've got to entertain Mrs. Beverly Smythe. I can't do it in this outfit. Just a moment. You can't put on us like this. Now, see here, Jack. That woman is a very important client. And I've got to... Oh, now look who's coming. If you disappear now, he'll be suspicious. I can't meet that woman. But she won't be back for now. Or you can get rid of this Romeo in five minutes. Just turn him down, like you did Dad. But he's in his third childhood. He's a cheek pincher. I put you, put you, put you, put you, put you. Oh, come on now, Babs. Get it over with. Oh, all right. Do I look seductive enough? I hate to mention this, Auntie, but you need a shave. I shaved this morning. Not close enough for Auntie. If old Spedicue pinches your cheek and feels that stubble, it's trouble. Now, come on, be a good girl and whisk off those whiskers. You can use the razor in my room. Why can't I be a bearded lady? Donna Lucia. Mr. Spettydew. Yes. You're very naughty coming in here like this. I just had to talk Stay to you. Stay right where you are. Shame on you coming up here uninvited. 
Just for that, I'm going to close the door. No, don't, don't, Donna Lucia. I waited for you in the bower. And when you didn't come, I... Oh, Donna Lucia, forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> Rather than offend you, I would destroy myself. Oh, Donna Lucia. Donna Lucia, you are such a picture of loveliness. I thought my lifespan was over. And then, then I saw you. Your face. Your face was like a kindly breeze carrying back to me all the days of my youth. Oh, Mr. Spang, you... I say, Babs, have you seen Kitty? Kitty? Oh, I've seen a Spedigue. Spedigue? Yes, and he's after me. Come on. Oh! Oh, it's you, madam. Very careless of me. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> That was a close shave, wasn't it? Yes, but not close enough. Look. It's better you caught me right in the middle of it. What? Yes, and keep your eyes open for him while I finish shaving. Just so fast, no faster. Here he comes. Good. Let me at him. I'll turn him down right off, and he can take his broken heart and get out of here. But he's sure to take Kitty and Amy with him. Good. Then we can get rid of the whole lot of them. But Kitty can't leave now. I haven't proposed to her yet. Babs, you've got to keep old Spedigue around here a little longer. Oh. Keep him on the hook. Just until I've had my talk with Kitty. But I can't do that. What do you take me for, a tease? And what about Mrs. Beverly Smythe? Now listen, Babs. Oh, all right. But hurry up before my beard grows back again. Here he is. Ah, oh, there you are. Hello, Donna Lucia. <laughs> Chase me! Oh. Certainly, madam. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen a distinguished looking lady about here? Definitely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Kitty, you know I like you enormously. Yes. Some people might even construe it as love, mightn't they? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, well, when, when two people love each other, they... They, they become uh, engaged, uh, don't they? Yes. And I, I thought that if uh, Oh, you... you are a dear to ask me, Jack. Well, what's the use of talking? I'll be poor for the next few years. We'd have to live in the suburbs on tuppence a year. Well, is there any reason why we shouldn't? Kitty. You know very little about me, Jack. Do you think if I were in love, being poor would make the slightest difference? We won't be for long. I'll work hard. Uh, I'm much too fond of you to let money stand in the way. You are, Kitty? Then... Then... Then will I marry you, Jack? Yes. Oh, Kitty. 
I did it. I did it. I don't see how. If I were a man, I'm sure I'd never have the courage to propose. You are bold, aren't you, Jack? Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, Kitty. Oh, I wasn't complaining. I was merely expressing an opinion. You're so pretty. Oh, really, Mr. Wickham, you needn't sound so depressed about it. Oh, I'm not depressed. I'm just, just uh, overexcited. <clears throat> Oh, Miss Amy. Yes? Well, don't look at me. <clears throat> Will you marry me? I love you. Well? Well, what? Well, aren't you going to say this is so sudden? Well, it isn't really, is it, Charlie? Amy! What, Charlie? I forgot about Uncle. Well, what about him? Oh, but what about my guardian, Mr. Spedigue? Oh. I'll see him at once and ask his consent. And you must get it in writing. Writing? Yes, so that later he can't retract it. You don't know him as well as I do. I don't trust him. Oh, but I couldn't ask him to do a thing like that. No. But Donna Lucia could. Donna Lucia? Yes. Mr. Spedigue has fallen a complete victim to her charms. He'd do anything for her. Oh, hello, oh. Charlie. Where's Amy? Oh, uh, over by the gate. Oh, I... I must go and tell her the news. I've done it, Jack. I've done it. Done what? Told Amy everything. Oh, you fool! What for? Told her what? Told her that I love her. Oh, is that all? Is that all? Why, it made me feel most peculiar. But she says I've, uh, I've got to get the old bounder's consent in writing. Me too. I wonder if the old miser can write. Well, there's only one thing to do about it. Auntie, Donna Lucia! Where's Spitting you? About a quarter of a mile back. Did you two pop the question yet? And the answers were favorable. Good. I can tell old Spitting you what I think of him. But you can't turn him down. What? No, you've got to accept him. I don't care, Babs. Look out! <laughs> Get off of me. Babs, you must be reasonable. Look, boys, I could never be happy with a man like that. I won't accept it. Only temporarily. Only until you can get his written consent for the girl's Samaritan. If you turn him down, he'll never give it. Just string him along. Look, when I have to use myself as bait for an undersized mackerel, that's the end. She's at resting. Yes, yes. Uh, she, she, she has a stiff back. We, we've been giving her a bit of a treatment. And the weather, you know. <laughs> Is that better, Auntie? Yes, now I feel like I have no back at all. Oh, Charlie, see I, uh, I suppose Jack mentioned the favor we want to ask of you. Yes, he did say something about a letter of consent. Oh, and you will get it for us, won't you? Well, now, girls, I'm afraid I can't. Oh, oh dear Donna Lucia, Lucia, haven't you ever been in love? Oh, dozens of times. Oh, I mean, once in love, always in love. Oh, <laughs> then you know how much it means to us, don't you? Yes, girls, but I don't think... Of course, I... Auntie will get it, won't you, Auntie? Now, Charles, I told you what. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep. That I'll be delighted to. Oh, oh you're an angel. You, you would. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, you're so oh. wonderful. Oh. oh, come along, Amy. We must find Mr. Spencer. He's down there. Oh, we'll bring it to you at once. If you don't stop kissing Kitty, I'll... And no more lovey-dovey with Amy. That's a Mrs. Beverly smile in your rooms, my lord. See? Now look what you got me into. Where are you going? 
Get him, Jack. What do you think you're doing? I'm going to change my clothes and be what nature intended me to be, a man. You can do that after you talk to Spittigew. But I got to take care of Mrs. Beverly Smythe. You can do both. Go up and meet this woman, then make some excuse, and you'll back down here as soon as you can. In the meantime, we'll try to keep old Spedicue occupied. If things get too hot, I'll toss some pebbles up at your window. And if you don't come at once, those pebbles will be followed by a rock. Come on, let's find Spedicue. What did I ever do to deserve all of this? How do you do? I'm Lord Fancourt Beverly. Oh, and I'm Mrs. Beverly Smythe. <laughs> uh, how do you do? Oh, oh, pardon me for staring, but you aren't at all what I expected to find. I thought I'd be met by some 18-year-old student instead of, well, obviously a man of the world. I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, that's awfully nice of you. And now that we're being frank, I hadn't pictured you the way you are either. Uh, you don't look at all like a client. Oh, thank you. Are you here on business, Miss Smythe, or just a visit? No, just a visit. You see, St. Olds was my husband's college. My late husband. Oh, oh, your late husband? Oh, well, that's fine. I mean, that's fine that he went to college here. A splendid place. Yes, he spoke so highly of it. So I decided to come here and get to know it as he knew it. Well, you couldn't have found a better escort. I've been here on and off for ten years. You know, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Smythe, I was out when you arrived. I was with a couple of chaps, uh, Chesney and Wickham. Oh. Being a bit older, I'm a sort of a big brother to them. They wanted me to meet their fiancés. And uh, as a big brother, did you approve? Definitely. They're lovely girls, both of them. Of course, they'll never turn out to be as charming and attractive as you are. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have said that. No. No, you shouldn't have said that. But I forgive you. Anyone ever tell you about your eyes? Something's come over me. May I offer you a glass of sherry? Oh, you certainly may. And, uh, what were you saying about my eyes? They impress me very much. Both of them. Oh. Oh. But you told me she was here. But she was, only a moment ago. Well, she's probably gone back to your room, so maybe I can find her there. Now, now, you sit right down here, Mrs. Spedigue. You're tired anyway. And, uh, and I, I'm sure she'll be back in a moment. Good heavens! What was that? Uh, just a passing hailstorm. Think nothing of it. It'll be over in a moment. Now, what I'd like to suggest for this evening is a charming little restaurant with a wonderful view of the river. Oh! Oh, what, what a large hailstone. And dangerous, too. And uh, that reminds me, I've got a lot of clothes hanging out on the line, and I better get them in before they're ruined. Do you know what clothes does to hail? I mean, to hail to clothes. I'll be right back. Now, wait for me. I beg your pardon, sir. Aren't the sweet peas lovely? Yes, Mr. Spinnick, you had some planted at home. Love flowers. Yes. Uh, ladies, would you uh, excuse us? Yes, oh, please, please, please. Come on, help me, will you? By the time I put these clothes on, there seem to be more of them. Donna Lucia. Oh, Mr. Spedigue, there you are. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't find the tea. So on the way back, I, I happened to see these flowers, and I just had to stop and smell them. Oh, they are lovely. Yes. Well, now, shall we go back and have our tea? Not just yet, Stephen. You don't want to go back? Well, part of me is ready to go. But part of me must stay. Uh, uh, I mean, my head says go, my heart says stay, and my feet are undecided. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Mr. Spedding, you. I jump for joy whenever I see your face. I jump and jump and jump and jump and jump. <laughs> oh, I had no idea I meant so much to you. <laughs> well, now that we understand each other, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Anything. 
anything. I want you to write a letter uh, giving your ward and niece consent to marry my nephew and Mr. Chesney. Oh, but... But there's so much in love. Uh, Stephen, please, uh, just for my sake. Oh, but why? Why speak of other loves when we have our own? <laughs> but I can't think of myself uh, until I see those children happy. Very well. We'll discuss it tonight. Good. Now, shall we, um... Shall we join the youngsters for tea? Yes, my darling. Oh, Stephen. Oh, Lucia. <laughs> Keep that woman in my room. Don't let her get out. <laughs> Son! Son! Mrs. Beverly Smythe. I'm Jack Chesney, a, a friend of Beverly's. He was called over to the proctor's office, so he asked me to come up and explain. Thank you. Uh, hey, Jack. Oh, excuse me. Well, son, why don't you introduce me? Oh, uh, Mrs. Beverly Smythe, uh, my father, Sir Francis Chesney. Oh. I hope I'm not intruding. Well, not at all. I was supposed to have tea here with Lord Beverly, but he seems to have been detained. Oh, what a shame. Well, the others are having tea in the garden. Why don't we oh, please no, join them? No, I, I'm sure Mrs. Beverly Smythe wouldn't enjoy it. Just two silly girls and Charlie Wickham's old aunt from Brazil. And an old aunt from Brazil? Yes. Oh. Well, uh, uh, what sort of a, a, a lady is she? Oh, a horrible old thing. Really? <laughs> well, I must see her. I spent a little time in Brazil myself. We should have a great deal in common. Oh, but I, I, I'm sure you won't like Nonsense. it. Nonsense. I can't wait to meet us, Sir Francis. Madam. Thank you. Do you know, I'm quite charmed with your town of Oxford here. I hope you shall allow me to show you around. Well, it's very grateful, Sir Francis. My dear. Thank you. What a wonderful day. All of us being together. I hate to see it end. Oh, but it's sharp, my dear. Now, I have a capital idea. We shall all dine at my house this evening. And we'll steal away and be alone together. That will be heaven. Donna Lucia Dalvadores, Mrs. Beverly Smythe. How do you do? Dalvadores, of course. Uh, I knew your late husband intimately. Oh. Oh, she uh, knew my late husband intimately. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you two should get along uh, famously. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, your husband and I... Uh, now, please, please, I, I'd much rather not discuss it. You see, that's one subject I just can't talk about. I just, I just... Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, how many sugars? I, I mean, I mean, oh, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I'm done. Fancy. Press it, press it. Water. Some burnt feathers, press it. Brandy. She'll be all right. My dear Donna Lucia, will you sit here at the head of the table? And may you grace it always from now on. Thank you. <clears throat> It's so kind of you to ask me here this evening, Mr. Spellyhew. It was a very, very great pleasure, I assure you, my dear lady. If you hadn't, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> Still be waiting for Lord Babbley, I imagine. <laughs> he must be a very ill-mannered young man, deserting you like this. Oh. Now, I wouldn't be too harsh on the boy. He was probably unavoidably detained. <laughs> I still think it was inexcusably boorish of him. You do, do you? Oh, well, my nephew introduced me to him this afternoon. I found him to be a man of great charm, culture, intelligence, chivalry, wit, affection, and understanding. As a matter of fact, I was never quite so impressed with anyone in all my life. And I'd rather not hear another word against him. Uh, I say, uh, do you think we'll win from Cambridge at cricket the next week, Charlie? Eh? Oh, we can't lose all with young Stiggins at the wicket. I think he's a good man, all right. It's too bad it's his last year, actually. Was he in the nets yesterday? Oh, marvelous. Extraordinary for me, sir. 
Well, Mr. Spedigue, I imagine you were quite a cricket player when you were younger. Oh, quite. Quite, 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 yes. I used to play a amount of cricket and bowls, you know. Bowl, oh, really? Oh, bowl. That's quite, that's quite good fun. Oh, it's really amazing. <laughs> Ancient game. Yes, yes it's a very fine. I think I've seen some photographs of you in the Yeah, office. I think it's a really good thing to do Well, uh... Yes, I think it is time the ladies were retiring to the drawing room and leave the gentlemen to their port. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a moment. Uh, Mr. Chesney was asking me something about Brazil. Was I? Yes, and I'm so glad you asked me that. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Brazil... Uh, Brazil is the most Brazilian place in all of South America. <laughs> it has its uh, rivers and lakes, uh, hills and dales, uh, cities and countries, uh, days and nights, and... Afternoons, too, of course. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Uh, Charles, please help. Oh, of course, Auntie. Oh, uh, Auntie, uh, tell them all about your coffee plantation in uh, Brazil. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, please do tell us. I want to hear all about it. Uh, well, uh, you know what coffee is, of course. And, uh, and you know what a plantation is. Well, uh, we had a coffee plantation. Uh, Dona Lucia, uh, do you prefer the Mokaka coffee to the Pinal? The uh, Mokaka coffee? Well, yes, yes, with a little sugar. <laughs> and it's delightful when served piping hot. I can help you now, Aunt. Uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, Amy, it's fine. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed And then, uh, then there's, uh, there's another kind of coffee. Uh, this coffee is grown uh, from seed on wet flannel. Oh, my dear, times are moving so fast now. It'll be in before you know it. What a world we live in. You know, I have a dressmaker who made this dress in six weeks with one of those new sewing machine attachments. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they seem to be telling stories. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes, Auntie. Excuse me. Which one are they telling? <laughs> are you going to join us, Mr. Wickham? Oh, no, I just came to see if uh, my Auntie was all right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, if they can tell stories, I don't see why we can. I know one. Of course, it's a trifle naughty. Oh, really? <laughs> well, uh, please tell it. Yes, yes, do tell it. This is one that Don Pedro used to tell. Uh, perhaps Donna Lucy would prefer to tell it herself. Uh, Tom Pedro? Uh, Don Pedro Daffodores, your late husband. Oh, Don, Don Pedro, of course. I know his name, I can't remember his stories. <laughs> oh, please go on. I'm sure Don Lucia won't mind. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> well, it seemed as though Don Pedro was walking through his coffee fields one day when he came across one of his workmen who was tipsy. The man had a girl in his arms and he was kissing her. Oh. Well, naturally, Don Pedro was furious, and he said, How dare you? And the man said, What's the matter? All your workmen do this. And Don Pedro said, How can you make a statement like that? What growls do you have? And the man said, Coffee growls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a lovely story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't you remember the star I done, Lucia? It was one of Don Pedro's favorites. Oh, perfectly. I shrieked the first time I heard it. <laughs> so that reminds me of a very funny story. Uh, well, what are you girls playing? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to show Donna Lucia the garden. You've no idea how beautiful it is in the moonlight. Oh, Donna Lucia, we are alone at last. Don't touch me. I'm very, very angry with you. Lucia, you wound me. Don't say that. Well, I do say it. The way you promised me to treat me like this. Promise? 
Yes, the consent you promised me in writing. But I didn't promise. Why, Stephen, to think that you'd go back on your word. Oh, Donna Lucia. That'll do you no good until I get the letter. But my dearest... Stephen, until you give me that letter, all is over between us. No. No. We can never be apart. There is some unseen something that binds us together. Well, maybe you're right. Just the same, I want that letter. Very well, dear. I'll go to my study and write it. But then, then will you say that you'll be mine? I'll say anything you like when I get the letter. Darling. Oh. If you look, you're no gentleman. Now you may help me up. Oh, a thousand pounds. Mm. Dearest Lucia, <coughs> tell me, did you hurt your back? My back is fine. Now go right to her. I won't be a moment. <laughs> Darling. Are you alone? May I sit down, please? My, what a dreadful smell of smoke there is in here. Uh, uh, yes, I noticed it myself. Must be something burning in the kitchen. I'll, I'll go see what it is. Uh, no, don't go. I want to talk to you. <laughs> about your late husband, uh, Don Pedro. Uh, oh, let's not talk about him. He was such a cruel husband. The Don Pedro I knew was so kind. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's his father, the old Pedro, the, the one with the beard. Oh. oh, forgive my curiosity, but have you any children? Uh, children? Uh, only a few. Uh, none to speak of. Uh, Adele Lucia, I'm surprised that you haven't acquired the habit of smoking. So many Brazilian women have, you know. Uh, well, uh, confidentially, I was just puffing on a perfecto when you came in. I thought you might not understand. So I, uh, uh, would you care for one? They're very mild, oh, you know. Oh, no. Uh, no, thank you. Well, you, you don't know what you're missing. Oh, Lord Babbley. Yes? Oh, is he here, too? Oh, it's no use. Lord Babbley, I've known who you were for hours. Oh, my goodness. You, you won't give me away, will you? That all depends. Uh, but, but this wasn't my idea. You must believe me. This whole thing started with sheep. I mean, when Jack and Charlie invited the girls to luncheon. Oh, such a long story. Can't we go someplace where we won't be interrupted? Well, of course. <laughs> Pardon me, ladies, first. <laughs> so Jack loves Kitty and Amy loves Charlie, and I'm playing Cupid in three petticoats. And that's the whole story. Maybe you're not doing them as great a favor as you think. Well, I'm getting them a letter of consent. What more do they want? Perhaps this letter of consent is, is merely a pretense. After all, Mr. Spedigue is obviously a fortune hunter. Perhaps the girls are after money, too. Well, that's impossible. Mr. Spedigue was against the marriage. Oh. Oh, he was. Of course. The moment love flies in the window, his income flies out. The only reason he's consenting now is because he thinks he's going to make more money by marrying me. Oh, please don't do that. I have other plans for you. You have? Yes. When you join your uncle's firm in the fall, I shall insist that you handle my affairs. Well. Well. In all deference to your uncle, I think it might be rather fun to have an attorney who thought something more of love's young dream than, than just a, a future alimony case. Uh, do you solemnly promise to be my first client? I do. 
Well, tell me. Do you believe in love at first glance? Oh, you do? I do. Anna Lucina! Donna Lucia! Do you really mean it? But of course I do, you silly boy. <laughs> well, I heard something. It's my heart. It makes an awful racket when I'm with you. <laughs> Let me be the first to congratulate you, sir. Then you know? Yes, I know. Oh. calling to its mate. You better go get that letter before he changes his mind. You stay here, and as soon as I get through his pedigree, I'll come back and take my clothes off. What? I mean, these clothes off. Steve! Huh? Where have you been? I've been looking high and low for you. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, my sweet. Children! Amy! Kitty! Mrs. Smythe! Is that the letter? Yes, but first. First, let us seal our betrothal with a kiss. A kiss? Yes. No, 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 Stephen. Yes, yes, no, no, I can drink. I don't mind. No. Just one. Stephen, no, we're too old for that sort of thing, Oh, Stephen. No, 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 Stephen. Stephen. When love consumes you, you are ageless. Just one. Just one little teeny, weeny one. Very well. Close your eyes. And keep them closed. Yes, dear. Now, give me the letter. There it is. Just one more. No, no, just one more. No, 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 it's just that love has made an audacious boy of me again. And children, Cupid has found another victim. A good fairy has tripped in among us, bringing with her unexpected light and joy. Oh, my darling, just feel your gentle touch. Please, Stephen, we're not on our honeymoon yet. I've been duped. You imposter! Who are you? I'm Charlie's nut from Brazil, where the ants come from. What? Give me that letter. No, give no, me that letter. No, no, give it me. No, no, give me that letter. No, 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 Stephen. Very well, keep it. It'll do you no good. There's not a court of law in all England that will uphold it, because it's addressed to Donna Lucia Dalvadores. And it's been delivered to Donna Lucia Dalvadores. But he isn't Donna Lucia. No, but I am. You. Oh. You? My aunt? Oh, yes, Charlie. Oh, you? I'm terribly sorry about all this, Auntie. It's quite all right, Charlie. After all, I did my share of deceiving, too. Will you forgive me? Well, of course. Well, thank goodness I shan't have to call you Auntie anymore. No, but you might be calling me Uncle pretty soon. <laughs> my Kitty. My Jack. My Charlie. My Amy. My Lucy. My Bessie. My income. Say, I wonder if he can sue me for breach of promise. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.